Tonight on Connecticut's news station, we're learning new details of what led up to a state representative flipping her car blocks away from the state capitol building. Nearly 15 years later, justice is served. A killer convicted in a Hartford cold case. We'll tell you how investigators piece together what happened years later. Mild start to the weekend, but a cold finish. I've got your forecast coming up. Plus, a new theory could finally shed light on how the COVID-19 pandemic started. The call being made by the World Health Organization tonight for more data. Husky domination. UConn wins its first tournament game under Dan Hurley. We'll walk you through the big highlights of the game. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight with new details in the case of a state representative charged with DUI after flipping her state-issued car in a crash. Good evening, I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. Thanks for joining us here at 10. Fox 61 cameras were the only ones rolling after Representative Robin Comey flipped her car with official state plates at the intersection of Capitol Avenue near Lawrence Street. Rewatched as Hartford police conducted a field sobriety test on Representative Comey, which she failed. Police then took her away in handcuffs. Comey is a Democratic representative for Branford and a member of the House leadership serving as assistant majority whip. She's now been stripped of that duty. Tonight we have new video and new reaction in the moments just after that crash. Fox 61's Jake Garcia spoke to one woman who recorded everything from her apartment. He joins us live in Hartford now with more on what she had to say. Jake. Well, Ben and Jen, uh, Kristen Blandon, Kirsten Blandon rather, was uh, just watching a movie in her apartment with her husband when she heard a loud noise outside. That's when she started rolling on her uh, cell phone as well as calling 911. What she didn't know is the woman being pulled out of that flipped over car was a state lawmaker. Um, yes, a driver, and there's people helping her out. She flipped her car. Kirsten Blandon describes the moments after hearing the wild rollover crash on Capitol Avenue Thursday night from her apartment. I heard this loud noise outside, so I got up to see what it was and saw a vehicle bouncing down to, to its final position of being overturned. Cell phone video shows the owner of the red carpet barbershop coming out to help Comey out of the car. She was thinking about leaving the scene. Like, she was going leave the scene and we were like just have a seat like you know until you know the uh, professionals get here. The woman behind the wheel state representative Robin Comey. Thursday night Fox 61 cameras captured video of police performing three separate field of sobriety tests which according to the police report she failed. She was then arrested for operating a motor vehicle under the influence of alcohol. I was just shocked that you know someone like that high up in the government would um, do something like this, you know, you're supposed to be a leader and and that's kind of sad to see that she would put herself and then also other people in the area in that position. Just one hour before the crash, State Representative Comey addressed her constituents on Facebook. Please don't hesitate to reach back out to me. Comey was stripped of all of her committee and leadership assignments in the state legislature until further notice. Connecticut House Speaker Matt Ritter released a statement today saying he hopes she focuses on her health and well-being. While the House Minority Leader Vincent Candelora said, I wish her well in any endeavor to seek help as she reflects on the seriousness of what transpired. This isn't the first time Comey has had a public incident with alcohol. Two years ago, she was slurring her words when she was trying to speak on the floor of the state house. Um, um, uh, Following that incident, she wrote an apology stating that she was exhausted and had been drinking wine with dinner that night. The incident garnering national attention and prompting state leadership to crack down on drinking inside the state capitol building. Now, the police report said that State Representative Comey was hesitant to give a breathalyzer test, though it later revealed that she had a 0.14 blood alcohol level, which is nearly twice the legal limit in Connecticut. Live in Hartford, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, thank you, Jake. And with this arrest, Representative Comey is now stripped of all her committee and leadership assignments in the state legislature. Speaker of the House Matt Ritter making that announcement earlier today. In a statement, he said his, he, quote, immediate reaction. His immediate reaction is to think about Representative Comey's next steps, adding that he hopes she focuses on her health and well-being. And I know, he says, quote, that her friends and colleagues will support her in any way we can. 
Fox 61 is the only station with the video of State Representative Comey's arrest. We have the entire video posted in our Fox 61 News app. Just scan the QR code here on the left side of your screen for that story and more. Well, new tonight, nearly 15 years later, justice for a Hartford man murdered back in 2008. A Hartford Superior Court jury has convicted killer. 38-year-old James Dexter Brown found guilty of murder today for the fatal shooting of 20-year-old Kenny Sullivan. According to police, the two men were involved in a fight between two gangs during a concert at the XL Center, and it spread outside of the center after the concert. It took 10 years for police to arrest Brown after a witness testimony linked him to the scene. He's set to be sentenced in June. Also new tonight, Connecticut State Police have announced they arrested a Tennessee state fugitive in Marlboro. 49-year-old Mark Henry Frakel is accused of reporting a fake bomb threat. He's currently being held on $500,000 bond and is also charged with being a fugitive as well. Let's get a check on the weather watch here with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. All eyes on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rach. Hi, we're looking good too. We'll see temperatures near 50 degrees tomorrow. Not quite as warm as it was out there today, but still right around average and really pleasant to be outside. It's the second half of the weekend where we turn colder and breezy and a cold front is moving in. You can see this line of showers off to the west of us and there were a few light scattered showers and sprinkles that came through earlier this evening. Right now we are quiet, but again, we could see a few more roll in after midnight tonight, which is actually pretty good timing because a lot of people will be sleeping for that. Today's high 58 degrees, about 10 degrees above average for this time of year, and it's still very mild out there tonight. We're close to the average high temperature and it's 10 o'clock in the evening, still hanging on to mid 50s in Danbury. Low temperatures tonight will be dropping back through the 30s, but staying above freezing. And as we head through the day tomorrow, we're partly cloudy, pleasant highs up around 50 degrees, quiet into tomorrow night. And then the wind starts to kick up and the temperatures fall for the second half of the weekend on Sunday. We'll take a look full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Well, March Madness is officially upon us. And for the UConn men's basketball team, it's a good start to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, for the first time in seven years, the Huskies are dancing onto the second round of the tournament. UConn played Iona in the first round and cruised to a commanding win, 87 to 63, the final score there. Fox 61 Sports Director Jonah Karp is in Albany with a recap of tonight's big win for UConn Nation. In a game where the final score doesn't remotely reflect the story, UConn men's basketball defeated Iona 87-63 in the first round of the NCAA tournament. A runaway in the last 10 minutes for the Huskies after a slow first half where Jordan Hawkins went scoreless and UConn went into the locker room down two. I knew like the shots were going to fall at some point. Um, I got great teammates around me um, that was going to give me open shots, so I really wasn't worried about it. Uh, so I, I, I don't put myself, put myself in that position too much because I know I have great teammates around me. And a major reason for the second half turnaround, UConn's dominance on the boards. The Huskies had twice as many offensive rebounds as the Gales, leading to 17 second chance points. Try to find inside position on the offensive and defensive end to go up there, grab the ball, you know, chin it, don't, don't turn the ball over, you know, just, you know, it helps us out a lot from, you know, rebound the ball. Um, you know, it's just, that's just one thing coach emphasized throughout the week is like, you know, they don't have the tallest, tallest center. So, you know, we got to dominate on the backboard and, you know, we did that tonight. I mean, there's such big presence. Adam is super skilled, super strong. He's hard to stay with. And then Donovan, you know, you just see his size and see his length. So, uh, I mean, they're key pieces for us. When they play well, it's very hard to beat us. A great game for Adama Sinogo. He finished with 28 points and 13 rebounds to help propel the Huskies to a second round matchup with St. Mary's. There was a little bit of pressure, but get our first win today. If you're good, if you're good, if you're good, if you're good. It's just nice to validate how good we've been, you know, and, and how the program has grown and continue to take steps. I mean, we. Yeah, it was nice to transfer what we've done in the regular season, being ranked last year in the top 25, being a top 10 team this year, just to, to transfer it in terms of the quality that we played at. And we've kind of got that monkey off our back, and now we could just kind of relax and go play the best teams in the country. The win is the 250th career victory for head coach Dan Hurley, his first in the NCAA tournament with the Huskies, and the first time UConn is moving past the first round in the big dance since 2016. Next up, a second-round matchup with St. Mary's, the two teams back here at MVP Arena on Sunday.
From Albany, Jonah Carp, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Let's go Huskies. All right, Jonah, thank you. From one Gales team to another, UConn now moves on to the round of 32 to take on number five seed St. Mary's from the West Coast Conference. The Huskies and the Gales have never faced one another in NCAA history. St. Mary's held off VCU in the first round to advance. The Gales have had a good amount of success at a big dance, advancing to the second round three out of their last four tournament appearances. Meanwhile, this weekend marks the start of March Madness for the UConn women's basketball team as well. The Huskies looking to make another trip back to the national title game. The number two seed UConn faces New England foe, the number 15 seed Vermont. Tomorrow's game is essentially a home game for UConn as the Huskies will play in stores at Gamble Pavilion. If they advance to the next round, their second round matchup will also be played right at stores as well. Well, Fox 61 has you covered on all things March Madness as we follow the Huskies on the road to the national championship. Our coverage with sports director Jonah Karp continues into the weekend with the men's and women's basketball teams on air, online, and on the Fox 61 app and anytime on Fox 61 Plus. Well, they don't call it March Madness for nothing. For just the second time in NCAA history, the unthinkable is reality. A 16 seed has knocked off a number one seed in the men's basketball tournament. This year's Cinderella Farley Dickinson, the 16 seed from New Jersey, playing spoiler to number one seed Purdue and shocking the college basketball landscape, winning 63 to 58. Again, this is just the second time a 16 seed has defeated a number one seed in the men's tournament. The first time it happened was 2018 when UMBC beat Virginia to shock the world. A lot of people out there ripping up their brackets. I was about to